say that uh, Sister Deborah uh, has just gave me her testimony this morning that uh, we prayed for a tumor, for a hernia that she had, and it's shrinking. Amen. It's gone. Her hair's growing back. <laughs> it's curly. And she's getting back with her husband. And she said that he's, they're coming next week to um, be in service with us because they're moving back to North Carolina. So we want to praise God and thank God for that. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we could be used by God to be a blessing in your life. Amen. Praise God. Well, this morning I want to share from God's Word. I'll be not too long. I want to be able to share the Word of God with you this morning. I believe it's one of the most important parts of the service, you know, sharing God's Word and having God's Word change us and mold us and shape us. And Sunday school at this time is dismissed. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also, always be ready to give an answer to him who asks you of the hope that is within you. So, starting next week, I might just call on you to give a testimony, so you better be ready. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I want to share with you this morning the power of deception. I want to share with you this morning the power of deception. What is going on in the world today and how things are escalating so quickly and how things are developing so quickly in the world and the power of deception one of the greatest powers of deception that I see is self-deception so many people are deceived into thinking certain uh, philosophies and ideologies and things that they've they've learned without examining them in the Bible, examining them how God feels about them. And so their philosophies they believe are, that are right, but yet we know they're going to in the end be proven wrong. The power of deception. I want to give you the definition of the word deception first. It means fraud, devil dealing, trickery. It means the acts or practices of one who deliberately deceives. Subterfuge, we'll get to the meaning of that word, which suggests the adoption of a stratagem or strategy or the telling of a lie in order to escape guilt or to gain a specific end. And we are warned in the last days that there were going to be a very strong power of deception that would come. And it's found in the scriptures in the book of Revelation. So if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do this morning, if you don't, the, the uh, verses of Scripture will be up on the screen for your convenience. If you have a pencil and a paper, please take some notes, because God may be speaking something to you, and you don't want to forget what God has said to you through the message. Not necessarily through me, but through the Word of God. In Revelation chapter 12, in verse 9, The Bible says, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which, what? Deceiveth the whole world. You can underline, deceiveth the whole world. I want you to take note of this. That the devil or the serpent or Satan is called the deceiver of the world. Now we know and understand that that's the inhabitants of the world. It's not just the globe itself. It's not just the uh, atmospheric pre uh, presence. It's not just the... Uh, the high powers, but he's got an objective, and his objective is deception. And then when he brings this deception, 
His intended objective is to get the whole world to believe his lie. Now we can understand some of the things that are going on in the world today and we can look in our, our very own government and we can see the lies and the treachery that are going on in government, both Republican and Democrat. I'm not here to point any fingers. There's lying and deception going on at the NASA. There's lying and deception going on in almost every form of government agency. But not only is it happening in our government, but it's happening among our people. So many people have to lie, cheat, and steal, and be deceptive so that they can get free money. So they can get what they think they deserve, they're lying, deceiving, when their deception will be exposed in the end, end time. You may get away with it now. You may get away with now deceiving. But there's coming a day when you will not get away with it. It will catch up with you. You will give an account for it. It's going to happen. But I want you to know that Jesus gave us a warning in Matthew. In Matthew 24, 4. Let's read that this morning. We'll go back to our text later. And Jesus answered them and said, well, let's go back and let's look for a moment. You know me, I like to look and see what we're talking about here. Go to, go to verse 1 for me, please, Brother Tom, if you will. It says, And Jesus went out and he departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2. And Jesus said to them, See not all of these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another, and this shall be all thrown down. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall be these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What shall be the sign of thy coming? Underline that if you would. There is a sign. Some people say, nobody knows when the Lord's coming. No, nobody knows the day or the hour, but we know the sign of the times. Amen. And they asked, they asked Jesus, they said, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And in verse 4, Jesus gives us the answer to one of the things. He said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. The origination, uh, the originator of deception is Satan and the devil. We saw that in Revelation. But the manifestation of that comes through man. Comes through people. That's how the Antichrist is going to come. Through deception. But he says, take heed. In other words, I'm warning you. I'm giving you an awareness. Church of God. People of God. Let no man deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you through their vain philosophies and ideologies. I don't care how many degrees they have attached to the end of their name. Because there's a lot of false prophets that have education. And how we know the truth, Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And how we know the truth is that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit will always lead us in the scriptures. Amen. So before you go and do anything, before you evaluate anything, a decision in your life, make sure it lines up with God's word. God will never lead you into error. Amen. He'll always lead you into truth. Yes, man may be the instrument that deception is manifested, but where, where it are, originates from is from Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, which is Satan himself. And he causes you to stray, he causes you to be led aside from the right way. That's what it means. To go astray, to wander about. 
to lead away from the truth and to lead you into error. To deceive you to be led into error and to be led aside from the path of virtue and go astray. To sin. To fall away from the truth. It's of heretics. And to be led away into error and sin. You say, what's a heretic? A heretic is someone who leaves the cardinal doctrines of scripture. There's a cardinal doctrine of scriptures, a realm of scriptures that we believe. That's non-negotiable. If you have one of our tracts, you'll have some of our doctrinal beliefs. And those tenets are non-negotiable. One is that you are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ by, by, faith, by grace through faith. Amen. The other is that Jesus is the Son of God. Come on. Um, the sacrificial lamb that takes away the sin of the world, Jesus. We believe that God came into human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And so those are non-negotiable. And now that we know where deception comes from, what is the deception that the devil will use in the last days to cause the people in the world, and sad to say, some undiscerning Christians to believe. Now remember, people who are deceived, and this is very dangerous and harmful, don't even know they are deceived. If you don't believe me, go talk to someone who's in a cult. Talk to somebody who's into a real depth of a cult, like Jehovah's Witness. Talk to somebody. They destroy the very incarnation of Christ. They don't believe he was the Son of God. They believe the Holy Spirit was a, was a thing. He's not a person. And so when you start examining their beliefs, yet they so, they're so, and what I love about them is that they, they're so sincere. And some of them are more dedicated than some Christians in spreading what they believe. Amen. They're tenacious. Yet some Christians never open their mouth and share the gospel. Yet they have a, a lie that they believe and they're willing to spread it thoroughly. All because the originator of deception is the, is the enemy, is Satan. They think they are right. They think that whatever they believe is right. And sadly though they are misled and lied to. And if not brought to the knowledge of the truth by the word of God. They will perish into a Christless eternity. Now let me get back to what this deception will be in part I believe. I say in part because the devil has many ways to deceive. But this is one tactic is very prevalent in many if not all churches and homes across the world. And particularly here in America. The great deception is this. Many are being told that it does not matter how you live, it's what you believe. As long as you believe in Jesus, it does not matter how you live because you are saved by grace. Remember who the originator of deception is. The Bible clearly warns us and tells us in 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly. The Holy Spirit speaks. I never knew a thing to speak. Now the Spirit speaketh. He's got something important to say and we need to listen. To what the Spirit of God has to say. <clears throat> he said, the Holy Spirit said this, that in the latter times, anyone believe we're in the last days? Amen. I do. I believe we're in the last days. You can look through and see the signs and you can even see the, right at the door, Jesus said, you can see the sign. 
He says, in the latter times, some shall what? Depart from the faith. Well, you cannot depart from something if you don't have it at one time. Hello? You can't depart from something unless you have something. He says, many shall depart from the faith, the faith, not a faith, the faith, meaning the truth. How are they going to do that? By giving heed, by giving their attention to seducing spirits and teachings of devils. I don't care, and I'm not getting on any, I'm not getting on any soapbox against our president. Understand what I'm about to say. But I don't care how loud and how often he gets up on his platform and says, this country is no longer a Christian nation. This is a Christian nation. Amen. It was founded on God. This is a Christian nation. Where we get our laws from is from the Ten Commandments. The government, if you go back and read the Constitution, was founded on God. There was a God awareness in our early government. But here's the deception. And this is how the devil does it. He misinterprets what is written. The Constitution that says separation of church and state has nothing to do with what they have interpreted it to mean. The separation of church and state in the Constitution simply means this. That the government cannot come into the church and tell the church how to rule itself. Period. That's what that means. That the church has a legal entity as a non-profit organization, whether they're 501c3 or not. It's in the Constitution that if you are a church, you are tax exempt. Amen. And that the government has no right to come in and dictate to you what you can teach, what you can preach behind that pulpit. That's the separation of church and state. Not saying that you cannot have Ten Commandments on the, on the steps of a, of a, a courthouse. Now you cannot have the Ten Commandments hanging in a public school. That's a deception from the devil to take away the Word of God out of the hearts and minds of people. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. How, has, how is he going to do that? You know the scripture in Genesis chapter 3 when Eve is in the garden and the serpent comes to him. Now I understood from the, well, who the serpent was in Revelation chapter 12. Which says the serpent, Satan, the devil. The serpent came to Eve and he, he what did he do? He didn't, he didn't appeal to Eve's beauty. He, appear, he, he, he came to her... And he appealed to her based on what God said. And he said, Hath not God said, Out of all the trees in the garden you shall not, you shall not eat thereof, neither touch it. For the day, you know. But then the devil said, God didn't mean that. That's not what God meant. That's in our society today. We're so politically correct that we can't mention the name Jesus anywhere. We can mention God generic, but we can't mention Jesus. Well, my Bible tells me if you, if you, if you deny the Father, you deny the Son. If you deny the Son, you deny the Father. But yet we can't say Jesus, we can only say God. We cannot no longer say brown bag... Because someone gets offended. That's coming. The law is coming to, to erase that. I saw it on the news. I can't believe it. Can't say brown bag anymore. Because somebody get, will get offended. Can't say the word citizen anymore. Because if you're an illegal alien, it's offensive. 
So you've got to say resident. Well, there's a, there's a philosophy behind that. They want to change the words to make the words not mean what they actually say. That's a deception of the devil from the very garden. Hath God said... They're changing what God said. He used the same method, and he's using the same method. When we will not believe the word of God, you can know for sure that you are being deceived by the same method Eve was. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care how grandeur you look at yourself of how intelligent you are. If you do not believe this word, or if you take this word out of context, you are being deceived by Satan. Just the same way Eve was. Herein is where the devil twists the scriptures to get people to believe a lie. This is what he says. Now listen to me. <clears throat> this is what he says. Tell me if this is not true today. I can live the way I want to. I can do what I want. Believe what I want with no accountability whatsoever and still go to heaven because I'm a good person. My good will outweigh my bad. But is this true? According to the Bible, no. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. If you have your Bibles, turn there. Know ye not. God wants you from his word to know what is about to be said. So you better pay attention to what he's saying in the word. Amen? He says, Know ye not. That the what? Come on, shout it out. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. I want you to understand and know this one thing, that the devil is real and that he's telling people that they don't have to be born again to go to heaven. There are some false prophets on television that will say the same thing. There's a man by the name of Kim Clement. Stay away from him. He's a false prophet. You go on his website, he'll tell you on his website, you do not need to be born again to go to heaven. That is a distinct lie and contradiction of what Jesus said in John chapter 3. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But the devil wants to put these lies in people's hearts. He said, be not deceived. This is one of the end time deceptions that Satan is using in the church of Jesus Christ today, worldwide, including America. And I've been to several countries. I've been to Guatemala, I've been to Mexico. Been to China, been to Africa three times, India twice, Mexico. And it's true what Jesus said, the heart is wicked above all things. It doesn't matter what culture you go to. Sin is sin. He says, don't 
He says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. If you believe that the unrighteous will go to heaven, you are deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters. Now I want you to understand that these are people who are living in this condition. Hello? I'm not talking about somebody that falls and makes a side slip. You understand what I'm saying? But someone who is consistently living in these situations. Be a fornicator, no idolater, no adulterer, no effeminate. Sorry. You all know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. Effeminate. Nor abuses of themselves with mankind, verse 10. Nor thieves, are you a thief? Some people will agree with me what I'm about to say, some won't. If you're not tithing, you're a thief. And if you continually, continuously live in that condition, you are not going to heaven. You can be deceived all you want to. I'm saved by grace through faith. Good. Believe that. This says, be not deceived. These people that live in this condition are not going to heaven. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to get your money. Because I don't care. I don't need your money. You know that. I've been in this ministry for 10 years without a salary. If I'm here for the money, I would have, I would have left a long time ago. No extortioners. Oh, let me go back up. No thieves, no covetous. Oh boy. No drunkards. No revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Let me ask you a question. Who is being spoken to here? Christians. The Corinthian church. Unsaved people don't read the Bible. And if they do, they don't understand it. Don't be deceived in thinking you can live this kind of lifestyle and make it to heaven. You are not going. I don't care how much you think or say you are. Mighty quiet in here. In 1 Corinthians 15, well, let me back up for a moment. I want to say that many churches today, and I say many, not all, hear me now, not all churches, not all Christians believe this, have this philosophy. The seeker-friendly churches only care about one thing. It's not the truth or holiness, or righteousness, or consecration, or sanctification? No. They care about their success, their goals, their accomplishments, and above all, money. And they will integrate, and this is how I know this, and they will integrate the way of the world into the church to get what they want. It saddens my heart and, and it breaks my heart when I see churches that are so big and on the platform where the Word of God should be taught that changes people's lives is they're having a circus. Elephants in church. You think I'm lying? Go on the line. You'll see it. Having trapeze artists. Having secular music. To, to get the unsaved into the church. And they're using all of these methods to try to reach people so that they can come to their church so they can have a large attendance. If you read one of our pamphlets, and you, some of you have them, 
It says, we are not a seeker-friendly church, neither shall we ever be one. I will not sell out my convictions to have a full church. That may be their church, but it's not the church of Jesus Christ. I don't need smoke screens. I don't need colored lights. I don't need the way of the world to get here, to bring people here, because that's not what brings people to Christ. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And those words are more powerful than any kind of gimmick or method that we can come up with. If we will lift up Jesus... We would go out and evangelize and go out to the parks and go out to the highways and by byways like Christ said and compel them to come in. We'll see them come in. But it's not in all this other stuff, theatrical stuff. This is one of the greatest deceptions the devil is bringing into people's lives. Let's look also at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. <clears throat> be not deceived, he tells us again, don't be deceived. Who's the, who's the one deceiving? The devil. Don't be deceived. Evil communications or evil lifestyles corrupt good manners. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Don't be deceived. Verse 34. He says, awake to what? To righteousness. Awake to righteousness. In other words, if he's, if he's asking the people to awake to righteousness, it means they must be sleeping. That he's describing in the context. Awake to righteousness and what? Sin not. Now that doesn't mean that you'll never sin because we're human. We have a carnal nature. But do not practice sinning. Do not live in sin. Hello. And if you do, the Bible says, for some have not the knowledge of God. The reason why people struggle with knowing God is because, number one, they don't read the Bible. Now we have different people that are students in schools, colleges, universities. How would you learn, or even in public school, how will you learn anything unless you go to the textbook and read it? How are you going to learn unless you take the test to make sure that you understand what the professor or the teacher is trying to get across so that you can learn your profession? I, I don't read the Bible. Well, you don't read the Bible. How are you going to know God? Hello? The only way you're going to get to know God is if you read the Bible. He's in there, you'll find him. And it's not just so that you can have a head knowledge, so that you can go around walking around impressing people with how much you know. Can I tell you, the ones that really know a lot about God are the ones that really don't say much. They can be in a room and conversations flying back and forth, and everyone's throwing scripture all over the place, but the one that's really, truly knowledgeable will just sit there. Read it, it's in Proverbs. It's a wise person. The Bible says a fool answers a matter before he knows the whole of it. He says, and I speak this to your shame. You're deceived if you think that you can live in those conditions and still make it to heaven. Let's look at a, what the Lord's instruction 
to us is found in Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look real quickly in Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 5, starting with verse 6. Some of you are going to be going to college very soon, too, that are here. Put the scripture and learn it. Because <clears throat> many professors will try to convince you that the things of God are not real. God's not real. Jesus Christ is not real. Here we have it again. Let no man deceive you with what? Vain words. Don't let him deceive you with vain words. If someone comes to you and says, I, 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 was, I was home and, and I fell on the floor and I died and I saw my body leave out of my, my body and, and I went up into the realm of the sky and this big black thing appeared to me and told me there is no God. It was a voice. It was so powerful that it shook everything around me. And then I, I came floating back into my, my body and I had this wonderful experience of peace over me. And now I know that there is not a God. Do not believe it for a second. I don't care who it is. I don't care if, if it's one of the most profound preachers on television. Many shall depart from the faith. Because it goes against the word of God. The Bible calls such a person a fool. In the Psalms, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You're a fool. Not because I'm calling you a fool. But because the word of God says so and God doesn't lie. Let no man deceive you with vain words. That's how they deceive people. They're getting words from these seducing spirits and doctrines, teachings of devils. And these satanic influences are coming into them. Watch what's going to happen in the next four years in this nation. If it keeps on going the way that it's going. We're going to turn our sovereignty over to the European Union. Watch. Some of you might think I'm crazy. What I'm telling you is, Obama has been primed to be the next president of the European Union. And the only way he can do that with the cooperation of America is to bring America down so that we have no other choice but to join the Union. Because we will not turn our sovereignty over otherwise. He says, but because of this deception, because of these people that will come in the last days with vain words to deceive people of all nations, all tribes and tongues. Because of these things coming the wrath of God upon the children of what? Disobedience to what? They're letting men deceive them. They will not be obedient to those who are crying out truth. Those that God has placed in their lives, they're not giving heed to the warning that God is saying to you, don't be deceived. Don't think for one moment that the devil can lie to you and tell you things and you believe those lies and you spread them as truth in your life. Don't. You be a part of that because if you are, the wrath of God is going to come upon you. So many people, because of deception and lying and cheating and stealing, at the end lose it all. And they go and they blow their brains out and commit suicide because they have... They blame God for it. No, they don't blame God because it's not God's fault. It's your fault for being deceptive. It's your fault for lying and cheating and stealing. It's your fault. It's not God's fault. 
God's telling you, don't be deceived. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't do those things. Because the more you open yourself up to them, the more deceived you are going to be. To the point where you may even get to the point you shake your fist at God and want nothing to do with Him. Verse 7. I gotta hurry. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore what? With them. Don't be a partaker with them. Verse 8. I'm gonna go all the way to 16 real quick. For ye were sometimes darkness. You were, past tense, Christians. You were, you were these things. You were these things. Don't become those things again. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Listen to me. I'll give you an example. I'm going to give a free promotional advertisement for Charlie's Pizza. So, Brother Louis, this is going to go on the CD and it's going to go all over the United States for Charlie's Pizza. Because we put our messages on the, on the, on the uh, internet now. Okay, and we've got people from Croatia or something like that, Russia, they're listening to our messages. So Charlie's Pizza is going to be on there. So if you get an order from some Ukrainian Russian um, wa wanting to know if you deliver, he owns a pizza parlor. Louis, when you go to pick out the fruit, or you go out to pick out the fruits, if you see rotten ones, do you take them? Why not? Because you don't want to serve rotten fruit. You don't want to serve rotten vegetables. See, the fruit of the Spirit, if you really want God's Spirit in your life, then it's going to be in all goodness, righteousness, and in truth. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's how you know if you're following God. But if you're not doing what's right, if you're not doing what's truthful, if you're not doing what's good, then the deceiving spirit is in your life. Deceiving you. I'll tell you, Charlie's Pizza would not be in, in existence if Louis did buy the bad fruit, did buy the bad lettuce, bad tomatoes, and put that in his sandwich. After a while, people are going to say, this is horrible. I'm not going to go back there anymore. What ends up happening if you continually do that? You lose business. Your business closes. That's why if you go to Charlie's Pizza... You've got to order the steak tips. <laughs> Louis gets the finest cup. I'm telling you, this, these things will melt in your mouth. I've had it a couple of times already. They'll melt in your mouth. Wonderful. Teriyaki. Wonderful. Okay, that's the end of the advertisement. Next verse, 10. Quick. Quick, quick. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. If you want to know what's acceptable with God, it's the fruit of the Spirit is done in righteousness and truth. Go back to verse 9 real quick. All goodness, all righteousness, all truth. Proving what is God's will. What's acceptable with God. Do you want to, how many want to really know what's acceptable with God? Do you really care? Some people don't even care. Do you care? That's how you can know. Look for the fruit. Make sure it has USDA approval. That's right. Verse 11, quick. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, I can still be a Christian and go nightclubbing. I can still be a Christian and wear scanty clothes. I can still be a Christian and drink. I can still be a Christian and take drugs. I can still be a Christian and do things out of wedlock. No. If you are doing those things 
according to the context of what we just read, you are being deceived. Hello? And I'm not trying to hurt anybody, please understand. I'm not trying to point out anybody. I'm trying to let you see the difference between being deceived by the enemy and not being deceived. And have no fellowship, hello, with the unfruitful works of darkness. Don't have unfruitful works of darkness. Don't have fellowship with them. Sister Jen, we're having a seance tonight. We'd like you to come. No! I'm not going! What are we supposed to do? We're not supposed to have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. We're supposed to reprove them. Why? Because we're not deceived. See, the world thinks Christians are uh, brainwashed. And people say to me, Well, yes, because you, you've been in this thing for 30 years. You're brainwashed. I say, thank God my brain's been washed with the blood of Jesus. For the first time in my life, 30 years ago, I got right thinking. Verse 12, real quick, come on. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Next verse. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. In other words, you can't hide what you're doing. You may hide it from man, you may hide it for a while, but you can't hide it from God. And eventually, the piper is going to come. And you're going to have to pay the piper. <clears throat> Next verse. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from, the arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Verse 15. So then, that ye see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as what? wise. God wants you to be wise. God wants you to be wise. Verse 16, real quick. Redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Redeem the time means to take note of how and when the time we are living in. Redeem it. Don't waste it. Study the Word of God. Get into God's Word so that you know what God's Word says. So if any man comes to you, even if I ever came to you and told you something that was not in the Word, don't believe it. You take what I say, you go into that Word, and you make sure it lines up with that in context. Come on. One more scripture real quick. Second Timothy three, thirteen to seventeen. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. He said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast what? Learned. We're all learning. Some people don't know certain things. But when you come to the knowledge of the truth, you better learn. And has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Next verse. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Look at it says. You have known the what? The Holy Scriptures. Know this Bible. Know it. Well, pastor, you know, there's so many different interpretations. That's right. There are so many different interpretations because people take things out of context. Tell you a quick little story. A man was walking down the street one day and he passed by the pastor's house and he looked and he looked and he saw the window curtains pulled back and he could see into the house. And he saw 
uh, the, the, the pastor with a broom hitting his wife. Well, he was shocked. And he went around and he started telling people, you know, we have a pastor who abuses his wife. He was hitting his wife with a broom. I saw him through the window hitting him with a broom. And before you know it, this gossip spread all through the church and the board had met and decided that they were going to have him fired and they were going to call him in and they called the pastor in and they said, we, we have heard some, uh, you know, some evidence that they have seen what you have done and you need to repent and you need, you know, we're going to ask you to resign. He said, well, what did I do? They said, we, well, elder so-and-so walked by the house and saw you beating your wife with a broom. He said, I wasn't beating her, uh, I wasn't beating her with a broom. She had, she had a mouse on her and I was trying to get the mouse off. <laughs> See, you can interpret things by seeing things, but the Bible says, make sure when you judge things, you judge righteous judgment. Amen. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Come on. And I'm going to close with this scripture. I promise you, promise you, promise you. Am I going to get... Revelation chapter 12. I said we go back to there real quick. Revelation chapter 12. How do we gain the victory then? Number one, by living right. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. This is how you become victorious. And they overcame him, Satan, the deceiver, the liar, by the blood of the Lamb and by the what? The word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Sometimes, 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 listen to me. Sometimes you'll be in a situation in your life, and I was when I was in, the, in Asia, where they could kill you. They'll kill you. If you. I know personally of a man who went to China with another pastor. He got through with Bibles that he smuggled. The other pastor didn't. They took a gun out and shot him right in the head right there. Yes, that has happened in our age, in our time. They love not their life unto death. Let me tell you something. When's the last time you stood for truth? Even if you knew it was going to cost you something. It was going to cost you to lose something. That's how you overcome the devil. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. It's not just what you speak. It's how you live. And the reason why we have to be this way is verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he hath but a short time. Short time to do what? Short time to deceive the world. Short time to deceive the world. So many times in scriptures you'll see a warning. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Read the word of God. And if you don't understand it, research it. Go back and look it up. Study to show yourself approved unto God, the workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's a way, right way to, to, to divide this truth and there's a wrong way. There's a spirit of truth and there's a spirit of error. Which spirit are you listening to in your life? Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for those who are here today. They're not here by accident. You brought every single person to this place. I pray, Father God, even those who are listening by the CD, you don't have to be deceived. You can be set free by the truth. For the word of God, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is, Jesus is the Messiah. The truth is, Jesus Christ came to give us life, and that life more abundantly. The truth is, that Jesus died on that cross and rose from the dead on the third day. 
to bring me into a place of relationship with God. The truth of the scriptures is this, that I can be born again and I can live a whole new life if I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Do that today. If you're here in this assembly and you never accepted Christ, I encourage you today, bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. God, forgive me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be Lord and Master of my life. I admit I've sinned against you, Lord, and I'm sorry. I ask for forgiveness, and I ask you to come now and cleanse me by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come into my heart and life and be Lord and Master of my life from this day forward. If you've said that prayer and you meant it from your heart, the Holy Spirit is coming to live inside of you. The Spirit of Christ has come to live inside of you. And now get yourself a Bible and begin to read God's Word so that you will no longer be deceived, but you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. For those who are listening to the CD, I encourage you to write to us, Forest Glory Christian Assembly, Post Office Box 51325, New Bedford, Massachusetts, 02745. For those of you who are here this morning, if you need prayer or you need assistance, please come to the altar. We'll be more than glad to minister to you and pray for you for whatever your need is.